Okay, let's start with Friday's trades, current positions, and finish with Monday's watch list. So Netflix didn't do anything on Friday. CLF, I followed my game plan outlined in my previous video. Bought it with a very tight stop, 1080. And offering price was actually 1075. I was speculating it to be around in a mid 10s. So 1075 is really at the better, uh, at the higher range of my estimated, at my uh, of my estimated uh, area. Uh, so I'm gonna use break even uh, a stop for my ads and uh, low 1040s for my initial buy. So it's overall gonna be a break even trade if it stops me out. And I think over time, over the next few weeks or months, it's going to be very easy to go to 13, 14, 15. So a very good risk reward in the trade. Just need some patience. Kala didn't do anything. Net yeah, Netflix didn't do anything. Pixelworks didn't do anything. AMD was a little bit of a roller coaster in Thursday after hours, Friday pre market and intraday on, on Friday. Uh, I was pretty much uh, like four or five cents from getting stopped out in pre-market and uh, just out of the gate on Friday, but uh, kind of held this slightly marginal high, lower high, tanked out of the gate, I shorted more in the mid-13s, covered some in the 1330s, uh, and I covered some more before the close. Um, I just didn't want to, uh, I had like 8,000 shares intraday at one point, and uh, I think I had 8,000, I don't remember actually. Uh, just covered a bunch. If it had closed red, I would have probably held all of it. VRX actually closed the whole position. I got back to 5,000 uh, shares intraday, followed my game plan from the previous video. Close kind of sluggish, just didn't go like I expected it to. Close inside of this little past two day range, I just. I just sold everything before it closed, just, nah. I have so many positions already, I just have no patience with things that are not working. I say Char released earnings, really, really good earnings. Didn't really do anything, it went briefly red on a day, I, I sold it um, on pops after that, I sold most of my position. Um, hopefully it sets up again a few weeks from now. ORX worked really nice. Uh, and even though I only had half size, I still made some decent money on it. It went up like 53% from my entry. Most of my sales were in the high 40s and low 5s. Uh, sorry, high 4s and low 5s. So, it's so pretty good. You know, considering my risk initial risk was like 15 cents and I made close to a dollar on average on the trade. You know, very good risk reward on the trade. This uh, recent IPO has just gone straight up since I bought it. I, I moved my stop a little bit above break even. I still think it can easily go up another few bucks before I'm gonna start selling. Labu didn't do anything, ATH didn't do anything. NAK, I've been talking about this trade idea for a long time now, like every single day. And uh, it did exactly what I thought it would do. And uh, I think next stop is four bucks. So um, I actually thought about holding more, like 40,000 shares overnight, but uh, I don't know. I just have so much stuff on, all, on already. I ah, decided against it. Um, ETRM stopped me out. No follow through on that one. APRI looked exactly like uh, ORX did about a week ago, but just didn't have any follow through. Went back into its range, sold before it closed, and um, hopefully it sets up again in a few days. CTRL released really big earnings. Been going sideways for, let's look at the weekly chart, pretty much for two years. Um, just broke out of this two-year flag. It had good earnings the previous quarter also, but the quarters before had really not 
exciting earnings at all. So you know, the earnings are starting to come in, they're starting to accelerate the growth, both the EPS revenue growth is starting to come in really nice. And just a few years ago, 2013, 2014, this thing was like 20, 25, 30 dollars on much less earnings, like half the earnings and like half the earnings growth it has now. So, you know, this thing can very easily go back to 20 bucks. I, I mean, I'm risking like, I mean, from 1370, stop is like 1330 or so. So what's, what's my risk? 40 cents to potentially make two, three, five bucks. I don't know where it can go. I'm willing to hold it for multiple weeks, even months. Just need a little bit of patience and can work out nicely. And COTV. I did what I talked about in a previous video, bought it on a dip, using a very tight stop here, low 36s. Either it goes or it doesn't. So those were the trades and positions. Let's go through the watch list real quick. I've been talking about this one, just waiting for it to trigger. Uh, this one had some decent, uh, ah, I don't know, the catalyst isn't really exciting actually, but if this thing can go up another two bucks on Monday, I would be interested in a short on Tuesday. And this one, I'm just still waiting for it to go to like 150 or something. Let's go through the long watch list. Most of these things are one to three days from getting really, really good uh, setups. So most of these are not quite ready. But some are, and I'm just basically looking for breakouts on all of these. Not gonna talk about this one. I wanna talk about a little bit. So, has um, super earnings, really super earnings. It's growing, you know, it's past few quarters been growing EPS by 800%, 600%. Revenues are growing by like 200%-ish. Uh, I mean, this is like insanely fast growing. Uh, forward PE is actually 15. I mean, this thing could be trading at P of 50 and still be cheap in my opinion but uh, I guess one of the problems in this one is the customer concentration uh, or it's one of the risks in this one uh, but if they can announce another big customer that this thing, this thing could be up like 50% in no time uh, the earnings should be in the next few weeks they haven't announced it yet but I'm willing to buy it right right out of the gate on Monday, uh, that's the 1,500 shares. It, it kind of trades very thin sometimes, like 20,000 shares, 6,000 shares. So, you know, it's kind of not smart to buy more than 1,000 or 1,500. And this is something I'm willing to hold for a long time. Mm. Let's see. Just waiting for this one to set up. Well, I'm waiting for a lot of these names to set up a couple of days from now. But this one is ready. Ideally, it puts in another uh, couple of tight range days, builds a few more higher lows. And this is also a really fast growing stock. Let's look at this one. And I think yeah, you know, the market is good. The setup is good, it's just resting on support, basically flagging like a, what is it, descending triangle or whatever people call this kind of a formation, whatever. It, it's just a formation that works. <laughs> if you have a good market and the right kind of a stock, which this is, just super earnings. Look at this thing, just enormous. Look at the earnings. They were losing money, losing money. And now they're just growing earnings by 300%. You know, look at this, 100, 200, almost 300, you know, 600. Revenues are coming in, growing really fast. So th this thing, in, in the weekly chart is kind of flagging-ish also. Building higher lows for like seven, eight months now, and you know, this thing could go to 15 once it breaks out. Um, so this is going to be one of my main watches next week. So I'm too lazy to talk about the most of these names. I just 
want to outline the most important ones to me. Um, so a bunch of names that had big runs on Friday, KBSF and ACOR. Oh, well, these are all like recent former runners. Just. too lazy to talk about them right now. So I want to talk about um, my favorite stock over the past couple of weeks, which is dry ships. Been building a tight range for three days. Look at the range it's been the past three days. Just insane, like 4, 415, 420, 380 area. Uh, and the range on Friday was absolutely tight. Like the average to range on this thing is one sixty eight, a dollar sixty eight. The range on Friday was seventeen cents, which is a tenth of the normal intraday range. It's insane. Like this is a long if it breaks this four oh five, four ten range. It's a short if it breaks this three ninety, three eighty five range. Uh, and it, it, it's something one can risk. I don't know, six ten cents to potentially make fifty cents a dollar, either way. Like, I don't care if it breaks up or breaks down. So, uh, definitely one of my main watches next week. So, yeah. That's it.